Today I'm going to help you get a huge advantage against your opponents in Rise of Kingdoms by teaching you what's called a jumper process. This will give you some extra loot and an upwards of 10 days extra played time on your account before landing in your final kingdom. And for those of you coming to my channel for the very first time, hi, I'm Chess School Gaming. I have more than 1,500 videos dedicated to Rise of Kingdoms. Those videos have been viewed more than 60 million times, which is kind of crazy. So consider subscribing to the channel for Rise of Kingdoms videos designed to help you get value and smash your enemies literally every single day. There are timestamps in the description, so if you feel like you know certain parts of this, just use the timestamps to jump to the part you're most interested in. Let's start with your civilization. There's a couple really easy choices here, and they're easy because you can always change your civilization later. In fact, you will. The only thing that matters for picking a starting civilization is the commander you're going to get. The bonuses matter much less. Now, I will advocate that the best civilization is almost certainly Britain because you are going to need a ton of experience powering up your commanders in the early game. And Boudicca gives you 20% bonus experience as one of her very first skills. Now, it's easy to forget when you've been playing the game for a long time just how important that really is. Britain also gives some training speed, which is very important. You're going to need a lot of troops at the start of the game. However, an equally great solution would be to say, you know what, I'm just going to go with China, which is what most people will recommend, and that is going to give you 5% building speed, also pretty important, action point recovery is nice, and Sun Tzu is one of the best epic commanders in the game. Ultimately, you're going to get all the epic commanders, so you don't have to worry about it too much, and I'm going to put my money where my mouth is for this video. Let's go with Britain. We're going to skip this part of the tutorial. You don't need to watch that particular intro. In fact, allow me to skip all of the tutorial and get to the part where you actually make decisions. Now that the tutorial is out of the way, I can show you the one item you're going to use to get a huge advantage over everybody else who starts in the same server that you ultimately end up in. And that is when you go to your inventory, you go to the other section and check this out. The beginner's immigration item. Now this is designed to help you be able to play with some friends that start around the same time that you do but you're going to exploit this to maximize your progress on your account and then end up in a kingdom with hundreds of thousands more power than the other people that start that very same day. You can see the beginner's immigration item says you can move your city to the location of your choice in one of the outermost provinces of another kingdom. Let me just summarize it for you. You can basically go to some other kingdom <laughs> and you're going to go to a brand new kingdom that is literally hours fresh but you're going to wait to do that until this beginner's immigration item is about to expire. In other words, you're going to take advantage of nearly the full 10 days of powering up your account and then go to a kingdom that has just opened up. That's the trick. And although that might sound really simple, there's things you absolutely should do in those 10 days, and there's things you absolutely should not do in those 10 days when you're building up your account. So let's start with the things that you should be doing as you power up. First and foremost, you can see right over here that it says this item will be removed once your city hall reaches level eight, which means that you should power your buildings up to level seven and no higher. So power up all of your buildings. You could use some speed ups if you wanted to, but you don't really need to because 10 days is more than enough time to get your buildings to level seven. In fact, you'll be doing these upgrades and ultimately you're going to have to stop upgrading buildings because you'll be past that point where any further, you're going to have to take it to building level eight. So although the tutorial might make you use some speed ups here, <laughs> generally speaking, you're not going to want to do that. I just closed out and I saved five minutes of speed ups. Not that big a deal, but you get the idea. The other extremely high value activity you should be doing once you land in your first kingdom here is to go and explore the map. And let me tell you, scouting kind of sucks. It takes a long time. Yeah, I would recommend to you that you have your scout hold position. That's that little checkbox down there for five minutes after you scout somewhere and that you manually determine where your scouts will go because you're ultimately going to hunt for villages and caves. Caves are going to give you chests that have loot in them and villages give you a little bit of troops, a little bit of resources, a little bit of experience tomes, and sometimes they give you economic research, which is pretty cool. So you're going to want to do this exploration to actually get a shocking amount of value and your scouts move awfully slow at the start of the game. As you get your scouting building up to level seven, this will go a good bit faster. 
But trust me, the amount of loot you're going to get by looking at these caves and actually finding all the villages in this massive map is going to pay off in the grand scheme of things. Now, you may be wondering, well, Chiskul, if I can't upgrade buildings anymore, then what exactly am I going to be doing with all the resources I accumulate over those 10 days? And that's a fair ask. You want to spend your resources down. They're going to be in open form, like you see them over here in the top right. You want to spend down your resources in something called the courier station. I don't have one yet on this account. In fact, I would need a second builder to keep things going here. But you're going to want to drop your resources as low as you possibly can without obviously going past City Hall level 8 so that people don't try to take them from you. And I will say, if your city gets attacked in the early game, um, it's okay. Even if people plunder your resources and kill some of your troops, you still will have such a huge advantage from all the things you will have accumulated that it doesn't actually matter. Here's a different account just to show you what the courier station looks like. Once you get to City Hall level 6, you can build this. You tap into it. Some things cost gems. Some things cost resources. I'm advocating you spend down your open resources by virtue of picking up the things that you can get for resources. Literally everything uh, from the courier station. You wouldn't normally pick up literally everything that... Uh, cost resources. But the thing is that when you migrate and you use this beginner's immigration item, you can't actually bring resources past your storehouse capacity, which means you may as well spend your resources down because you can't take them with you. So tra train troops. OK, that's fine. Don't use speed ups on them, tra but train troops that'll use some resources and then spend them in the courier station. Also, you'll be able to make a little VIP shop. OK, uh, you can go to your VIP shop. There'll be a few things at low levels of VIP that you can go buy by spending resources. Just try to drain your resources in every way that you can, but don't take your buildings past level seven. Level seven is the limit, okay? At the start of the game, you're not going to have many commanders, but you are going to want to level them up in this 10-day time frame that you have to work on your account. I would recommend that you spend all of your action points. That's the green stuff all the way in the upper left over here. Action points are necessary to fight barbarians, to rally barbarian forts, so you should run out of your city with the main commander that you're working on. In this case, we're just starting with Boudicca, right? She's gonna give a nice little 20% experience boost, and we're going to hunt for barbarians. Now, in fairness, that experience boost does come a little bit later. I need to unlock her second skill. We'll talk about that in just a minute here, but you should go spend your action points smashing these barbarians, because that is going to give you loot, and that loot you can bring with you. The majority of that loot is going to come in token form, and this is extremely important. Your tokens do come with you everywhere you go. You can bring them with you to your new kingdom even beyond your warehouse or storehouse capacity limit, which means that you should not open any of your tokens. It will be a tragic error to open up your resource tokens because you might not see many of them now, but trust me, you will accumulate a lot of them, especially if you are spending down your action points battling barbarians, as I am doing here. You want to keep that AP bar drained because AP is just like straight up free value for spending some amount of your time paying attention to your account. Plus, as you can see, I just leveled up, which is going to make your commanders more powerful. This, by the way, is my main account. And if you wanted a talent build for Boudicca as you're kind of leveling her up and applying talents to her, let me just pull that for you really quickly. Here's my Boudicca level 60. I've got a peacekeeping talent build. Start with the yellow talents, make your way over here to reduce the action point cost. It's all about efficiency, baby. Also, you make your way over here. You're going to pick up some extra loot for every barb you kill. Seems really good to me. Plus, man, troops move really slow at the start, so the extra march speed is pretty good. This is a solid Boudicca barbing build if you go with my recommendation of using Breton. One major activity you will be doing at the start of the game as you level up your academy is that you're going to go in and do research in this building. Now, the economic research, you can get a fair amount of this just by exploring the map and looking at tribal villages. However, there'll be some economic research you probably still need to do and your military research you will also need to get done. Research everything you possibly can before your jump that technology will be pretty limited because you're only going to be able to take this building to level 7, but that is a part of what you're trying to knock out, is just maxing all the tech that's available to you before you make your jump. The final consideration that you probably want to get done in this 10-day time frame is that you probably want to get to VIP level 6. 
You can use some gems to do this if you need to, and you will get gems as you go, but every day you can claim some rewards here, and these rewards are pretty nice. These will start to stack up really, really quickly, and spending some amount of gems at the start to get some VIP is definitely a worthwhile endeavor. This is especially true because you will get a second building queue at VIP level 6. Now, you could, if you want, be patient, and you could let other people buy bundles, and in your alliance, maybe you'll get some chests. Those chests will contain some VIP, maybe. There's other ways that you can go about getting VIP. You can buy some bundles yourself. That will also get you some VIP levels. But the extra building queue and all of the perks that you get along the way here are pretty great, and you get better and better rewards every single day as you level up your VIP. Now, just as important as the things that you should do with your brand new jumper account is the things that you should not do. I already mentioned don't open all your resource tokens, but also don't collect your main mission quest rewards. When you open up your quests off to the left-hand side, this is gonna it trigger you probably, it triggers me. I'm like, oh man, I gotta, I gotta collect rewards, I gotta collect rewards. But all of these main quests and side quests do not collect these rewards. The reason you do not want to collect the rewards is that they all have the potential to be stolen or lost for the most part. Some of them actually do stick with your account, but it's just way simpler to not collect any of these. The resources you can't take with you. Your resources will have to be lower than your storehouse. That limit's going to be very, very low. The troops, may your city may get attacked, so you may lose them. There's no sense collecting any of these rewards, but do collect your daily quest rewards. The daily quest is the lower tab, as you saw me just select. You can collect these and get your daily quest objectives done, which is pretty solid. And one little trick, once you've finished building all the stuff in your city, and, and you'll have to check if this is still the case, but if you build one road or one tree, it's just a decoration, but the way this used to work is it would actually count toward your completing the quest to actually build a building in your city. And once all your buildings are at level 7, you will actually be locked up. You won't be able to do that. Uh, but there is a quest that you get every single day to go build something. Try it out and see if that works for you. Building a tree or building a road. Once you get locked up on that quest, that'll make it a little bit easier to get all the way to the top here. 100 for your daily quests. And by the way, those daily quest rewards are pretty solid. I mean, you want to get a gold key every day and 100 gems every day. Yes, and the epic sculptures actually matter to you a lot at the start of the game. Now, once you are ready to use your beginner's immigration item, how exactly does that work? Well, you're going to zoom out, and then you'll see you get a little globe icon over here. You're going to tap the globe. You're going to select the kingdom that you want to go to. So, for example, I'm actually going to do the wrong thing. You shouldn't do this. I'm going to go to an older kingdom. It doesn't really matter for this account, but you would want to go to the youngest kingdom possible. In this case, I started in a very fresh kingdom, but you're going to wait all the way up to nearly 10 days. You're going to be watching for new kingdoms popping up, and when a new kingdom shows up, you're going to jump into that brand new kingdom. Now, you don't want to wait too long because you could get to the end of that time frame and no new kingdom pops up, and you end up having to go to an older kingdom than you'd like. But you, if you wait longer than that 10-day timer on your beginner's immigration item, it will disappear, and then you won't be able to do your immigration. So you have to go sooner than that timer. But anyways, I'm going to pick this kingdom. I am going to hit immigrate. It tells me, by the way, the server's age and to the left. So if you wanted to know exactly how old it is, the younger the better. This one's four hours old. Well, gee, that seems really good. Um, you could select your starting province. In this case, it's not really going to matter. Um, ultimately, if you're going with a group, you're going to pick a location together, but... I'm just showing you this on my own. I'm going to hit immigrate. And here are all the requirements that we've been talking about so far in the video. Your city hall has to be lower than level eight. You still have to have your beginner's immigration item. All your marches need to be in your city. No troops, no scouts, no nothing can be out of your city. Um, neither your city nor your troops are in battle. So nobody uh, can be attacking your city. You can't migrate while you're actively being attacked. You can't have any reinforcements in your city. If someone has reinforced your city, you'll go to your alliance center, you just kick them out. It's unlikely that that'll have happened because you need to have left your alliance in order to go through this as well. Um, you cannot have more than two characters in any one kingdom after migrating. That's interesting. Um, for the beginner's teleport, that uh, seems to be the case. I know later in the game that will be maybe not an issue, but I'll keep going for now. The number of resources you possess does not exceed the protection capacity of your storehouse. Your storehouse is going to have such a small amount of protection. So you may have to just destroy some amount of your resources. It, it is what it is. 
You're not really here for the resources. You're here for just getting the base level of your account to a better place. And because each kingdom's event progress is different, immigration may cause the progress of certain events to reset. You shouldn't have any crazy events going on where you really care about this. Um, but do keep in mind that progress toward events is going to be reset. So if there were some event that happened to have showed up like a holiday event, your progress in that event may reset. So just be mindful of your timing around holiday events and special events that show up that are time limited so you don't lose progress potentially if you really wanted to hold on to it. And then boom, I'm going to hit teleport. Here we go. Yep. You get a loading screen and then you'll be in your new kingdom. Easy. Now, when you do this, you'll have had up to 10 days of extra time to accumulate strength to your account. You will have all your buildings to seven. You'll have scouted a whole kingdom's worth of caves. You'll have done a whole bunch of things that give you a good bit of a jump start over other people that are just starting fresh. But if you wanted even more advantage, what else could you do? Now, there used to be some really hacky techniques where you would try to time with another kingdom winning big events. That's not really the case anymore. Kingdom versus kingdom and getting extra re rewards from that is not something you can do. But there is one or two things you can do. One thing you can do is if you are extremely patient, you can have an account that you let sit dormant. You literally don't log into it for over 30 days. And if you do that, when you log into that account again, it's going to give you a series of welcome back events and rewards for basically doing this process we did. So it's not a lot, as you can see. Five gold keys and 500 gems really is not much. But if I hit go and I select a brand new kingdom here, let's see what happens. Do you want to create a new character and start a new journey in this kingdom? So this is a way that you can go in get a little bit of extra rewards for doing the same thing, and you can still go and do the whole jumper process. In fact, I will show that to you in just a second. Let me skip through this tutorial. Okay, the tutorial's done, and just to prove to you that this works, if I go to the other section of my inventory, there's the beginner's immigration item, and my extra rewards for having an account that sat idle for 30 days <laughs> is the 500 gems, five gold keys, a basically irrelevant amount of resources and a territorial teleport. Look, this is not much, and you used to be able to get so many rewards that the developers have repeatedly nerfed this process because it was too overpowered. And even as it stands, simply taking the nine and a half-ish extra days that you take working on your account is still an astronomic advantage compared to everyone else. But if you wanted to take that advantage even further, then you'll join what's called a jumper group. Hundreds of people get together and do this process all together at the same time. And it is absolutely gangbuster having a group of people all doing this jumper process, mostly because you are guaranteed to be in a group that you're interested in being in when you land in your final kingdom. And I cannot overstate how important it is to find a great group. Now, if you wanted to join a really strong group, I've got really good news for you. My Discord server is one of the most popular places for these groups to form up. So I will put a link in the description for my Discord server, but it's very simply discord.gg slash chiskool. And if you're looking for more resources about jumper guides and also videos to help you get started in the beginning, then linked in the description of this video, is a series of videos. In fact, in just a moment, up on the screen, you'll see cards for my beginner playlist and also my jumper guide playlist. You're going to want to check those videos out. And before we close out the video, I want to give a big shout out to Rambo from the Eternal Empire who walked me through the more sophisticated jumper process. If you really want to be sneaky and get some extra stuff doing this whole process, you can have your group try to time what kingdom they go to based on getting specific events in those kingdoms. So for this process, I said, just start in a young kingdom, wait 10 days, and then you, 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 know, you jump before the 10-day timer. But what you could do is hunt which kingdoms have certain events that give special rewards, play those re events and those rewards in those kingdoms, and then go to your final kingdom. This might not seem like a big deal, but it actually turns out to be really important. And you also can time with holiday events, 
So if you wanted, you could play a full cycle of holiday events on your account. Those holiday events end, and then you jump to a new kingdom, and all the people that are starting fresh, they didn't get those holiday events. So you have all those rewards worth of extra stuff. This is the beauty of a jumper group, is other people can obsess about those sorts of details for you like the Eternal Empire. Thank you again for spending time with me to make sure that I had the latest and greatest information about the jumper process. Again, although the rewards are not as good as they used to be, simply getting 10 days, upwards of 10 days anyways, of extra time is a big deal. If you found this video helpful, throw a like on here, subscribe to the channel, and check out those other resources, which will be on your screen now.